Hi, and welcome to a beginner's introduction to computer programming in the classroom with Scratch. Even if you're unfamiliar with Scratch or have never practiced computer programming before, this lesson will help you learn how to bring coding into your classroom. In this activity, we're going to teach our sprite how to draw basic 2D shapes like a square, a triangle, and a pentagon, all by using code. So let's get started by visiting the Scratch website at scratch.mit.edu. Scratch was developed by the Lifelong Kindergarten Group at the MIT Media Lab as a way for people to learn how to program their own interactive stories, games, and animations. Now, you might want to pause this video and sign up for an account before we get too far. You'll need an account if you want to save your work. But you can still get started in Scratch without having an account. Just click on the Create button to start the Scratch interface. So let me show you around. This area here, to the top left, is called the stage. It's where the output of your program is shown. You'll notice there's an area where you can name your project, and this green flag and stop sign icons. We'll need those later. Below, you'll see the sprite list. Sprites are the characters or objects in your program. In the middle is the palette. The space to the right of the palette is called the scripts area. We'll be dragging code blocks from the palette into the scripts area and stacking them in sequence to make our sprites do things on the stage. You'll also notice if this is your first time using Scratch or opening the program, this tips window. We can actually dismiss it for now by clicking the X. It does have a series of interesting tutorials for getting started with Scratch, but we won't need them for today's activity. So, if we want to teach our cat sprite how to draw a square, we're going to have to give it some instructions. Well, what do we know about squares? They've got four equal sides and four 90 degree angles. So let's teach that to our sprite. Let's start by bringing out an event block called when green flag clicked. Now events are starting blocks that cause other things to happen. Next, let's add a pen down block by going to the pen palette, and dragging it out to the stage. The pen down block activates the sprite's ability to draw or leave a trail on the stage as it moves around. Speaking of movement, we'll go to the motion section of the palette and we'll drag out a move 10 steps block. We can actually click inside this field where it says 10 and change it. We're going to change it to say 100 steps because 10 steps is so small we probably won't even see the mark it leaves. To make a 90 degree turn, we'll have to bring out one of these turn blocks. I chose turn counterclockwise, and again, I'm going to click in the field where it says 15 and change it to 90 degrees. Now, this should be a pattern. We should move 100 steps to create a side, turn 90 degrees, then move 100 steps again, and then turn 90 degrees again, and so on and so on. You might have your students repeat that pattern if repetition would be helpful for them. But, if you'd like them to take advantage of this tool called a duplicate stamp, you can actually click on a set of blocks, like the code blocks here from Move Down, and make a copy of them. So, we should see a pattern. Move to make a side, turn 90 degrees. Move to make a side, turn 90 degrees. And so on and so forth. Let's test it out by clicking on our green flag to execute the sequence and run the program. All right, great. So we see the square. If you're having a different result, you can pause the video and check your code against the tutorial video here. Um, one thing to look out for is to make sure that all the turn blocks are turning in the same direction. Now I'm just going to insert a few code blocks for house cleaning's sake. First, I'll find the block that's called go to xy. I'm going to insert it right beneath the when green flag clicked block. You notice it inserts itself and pushes all the other blocks down. Now what this does is it ensures that my sprite always starts its drawings from the origin point, or 0, 0, on the coordinate grid. Uh, there is a coordinate grid system behind the scenes uh, on the stage here. After that, I'm going to find a point in direction block and insert it below my go to xy block. And last, just for fun, I'm going to insert a block that says set pen size, and I'm going to change its value to 5. This will make sure that my drawings are a little more clear 
and a little bolder. Now I'll press the green flag to test. Great. So if you ever want to slow down this process a little bit for your students or just for yourself, you can actually insert some pauses in between the moves and turns so that you can sort of see it step by step happening. To do that, we go over to the control section of the palette and notice this block here called wait one second. We can insert a number of these waits in between the moves and turns. And after you see when I'm done here, we'll test it out and we'll see that it slows down the process so we can sort of understand it a little better in case it was moving too fast for your students. Let's test. Well, you can see that the cat is moving in the square, but it'd be helpful if there was a way to erase everything that we currently saw so that we can have a new drawing fresh each time. To do that, let's go back to the pen section and bring out this block called clear. We can add it in between our other pen blocks and then test again. We've certainly achieved our goal of teaching the cat sprite how to draw a square, but we weren't exactly efficient about it. We can actually get the same output by using only a third as many code blocks by using a loop. I like to tell my students that computers are great at repetitive tasks because they never get bored or tired, and they won't make any mistakes so long as they weren't poorly programmed by a person. So what I'll do first is I'll detach all the blocks below the pen down block by clicking and dragging them away from the stack. Now that these blocks don't have a event block, such as when green flag clicked on top of the stack, they won't do anything. Uh, they can't be run. And in fact, what I'll do here is toss them out. What I can do is drag them over to the center area of the palette, and they disappear. Now we did see a pattern before, one that repeated. We moved a few steps to make a side, and then we turned 90 degrees. And then we did that again three other times. So, you can actually make that happen in code by going to the control section of the palette and finding this block called repeat. I'll drag it out and attach it below the pin down block. Notice this repeat block, because it's a loop, it's shaped sort of like a C, and it has a space inside where other code can go, code that will be repeated again and again. So let's bring in those blocks that would execute the pattern. Good one. Move 100 steps, and then turn 90 degrees. Now I'm just going to go back to the control area of the palette again and bring in those weights. Now I do want to be sure to check my repeat block. By default it's 10, but in this case we want to draw side and turn a total of 4 times. So I'll change that. Now let's click the green flag to see if we can get the result we're looking for. Next, to make an equilateral triangle, we can modify our square code to become triangle code. Uh, it'll need to move and turn only three times. I can change the repeat. And the angles would be 120 degrees because the sprite is actually measuring the exterior angle of this polygon. And that's a great opportunity to talk to your students about the rules of interior and exterior angles of polygons. Anyway, make sure to change this to 120 and test. So now let's use the rule of exterior angles that we just thought about to draw a pentagon. We know that a simple regular pentagon will have five equal sides and have five equal angles that'll each be a fraction of 360 degrees. So we can use a division block inside the operator section of the palette and plug it into our turn block. Fill in 360 and divide it by five. And be sure to make sure that the repeat is also 5. So what's fun about this is we've just taught the sprite a little algorithm for calculating the necessary value in degrees for making any simple regular polygon. Now let's test. Cool.
cool. Now our cat knows how to draw simple, regular pentagons. And I think that you can see how fun programming can be with tools like Scratch. I can personally say that my students have always enjoyed it. And now at a very young age, they see coding as a medium to creatively express themselves and to solve problems. Uh, I encourage you to find more great Scratch activities at the Scratch Ed website, where educators are sharing how they incorporate Scratch into a wide range of educational activities and different subject disciplines, not just math and technology. Uh, and keep on the lookout for future tutorials that I'll be sharing here. Thanks. Have fun.